Hi, my name is Saurav Sharma and I am an application engineer at Maxim Integrated. Today, I am going to show you CAN fault detection demo. Control area network, popular as CAN, is a serial bus system, widely used in industrial, automotive and home automation application. CAN system includes multiple nodes connected to a differential bus. Each node consists of CAN controller and a transceiver. Controller classifies the data link layer aspects such as CAN data frame, synchronization and CRCR check, whereas transceiver classifies the physical layer aspect such as electrical level, maximum baud rate and differential data transmission through CAN H and CAN L. Generally, the physical layer does not have any diagnostic for monitoring the fault on the bus. The most common bus fault in the system are transmission failure, overcurrent failure and over voltage failure. For example, the transmission failure can occur in a bus when a system sees open load to CAN H and CAN L. Overcurrent failure can occur to a system when CAN H is shorted to CAN L. Over voltage failure can occur to the system when the common mode voltage exceeds the transceiver specified limit. Once these fault occur, it takes considerable amount of time to debug and troubleshoot the fault. Maxim has recently introduced a CAN transceiver, Max 3301XE which incorporates the fault detection feature where it monitors the CAN H and CAN line for the system faults such as transmission failure, overcurrent failure and over voltage failure and it reports the error code to the controller. The error code provides the valuable diagnostic information which helps to debug the fault quickly and reduce the equipment downtime. Other features of this family of transceivers are plus minus 65 volt fault protection on CAN H and CAN L plus minus 25 volts of wide common mode range and high SD of plus minus 45 kilovolts. Now let's look at the demo. This is the block diagram for CAN fault detection demo. Demo board is a three node system. All the nodes are connected to 120 ohm bus. Each node consists of CAN controller and MAX 33012E transceiver. Fault generation circuit generates various system fault on the bus. Each node is provided with fault LED indicators. LCD displays the fault information and the ground shift voltage. Let's look at the hardware now. Here is the controller transceiver connected to 120 ohm bus. This section corresponds to transmission failure. CAN H of all the nodes are connected to the bus via these node switches. Making these node switches toward right will disconnect the CAN H of particular node from the bus. Node 1 is a transmitter, sending data to node 2 and node 3. Let's check the transmission failure on node 1. I am making the switch position to right. This will disconnect the CAN H of node 1 from the bus. Red LED on node 1 indicates the transmission failure and same has been displayed on the LCD. Making the switch position back to left should clear the fault and the normal communication resume. Let's check the same thing on node 2. I am making the switch position to right. This will disconnect the CAN H of node 2 from the bus. Red LED on node 2 indicates the transmission failure. It is interesting that the transmission will not stop because the node 1 and node 3 are still communicating on the bus. Making switch position back to left should clear the fault and LED goes off. Let's check the same thing on node 3. Making switch position right disconnects the node 3 from the bus and red LED on node 3 indicates the transmission failure. Here also the transmission will not stop because node 1 and node 2 can still communicate on the bus. Making switch chain back to left should clear the fault on node 3 and reconnects node 3 on the bus. Let's see what happens when we trigger the transmission failure on node 2 and node 3 together. This will disconnect the CAN H of both node 2 and node 3 from the bus. Red LEDs on node 2 and node 3 indicates their transmission failure. Here the transmission will stop because node 1 will not able to receive the acknowledgement from node 2 and node 3. Same has been indicating on the LCD. Switching position back to left should clear both the faults and the normal communication should resume. Here you can see both the LEDs are off and LCD displays the normal communication. Let's see how system generates the overcurrent fault. This node switch is responsible for generating the overcurrent failure on the bus. 
By making this node switch towards right, we'll short the CANH and CANL on the bus. Let's see what happens when I initiate this change. Blue LED on node 1 indicates the overcurrent failure on node 1 and same has been indicating by node 2 and node 3 as well. LCD displays the overcurrent failure information. Now let's clear the fault by making the node switch back to left. The no X status on the LCD for momentarily shows that the node 2 and node 3 are still clearing the fault. So now all the LEDs have been clear and the normal communication resumes. Let's see how hardware generates the over voltage fault. Over voltage fault occur in a system when the bus common mode voltage exceeds the transceiver specified limit. This section generates the over voltage fault. Node 2 and node 3 grounds are shifted relative to node 1. Boost circuits along with the op amp generates the ground shift voltage. Potentiometer is used to vary the ground shift voltage. Let's see what happens when I increase this voltage. I am increasing the ground shift voltage, same has been indicating on the LCD. On reaching the voltage approximately 30, the green LED on node 2 and node 3 close. This indicates the over voltage fault and the receiver CMR for node 2 and node 3. Let's try to reduce the voltage and clear the fault. The no act signal on the LCD shows that node 1 is not able to get in any acknowledgement from node 2 and node 3. So the node 2 and node 3 LED goes off and the normal communication resume. Let's test the fault protection feature of MAX 33012E. This circuit generates the 65 volt pulse on the bus. The circuit comprises of switches, BJT and passive elements. Pressing the trigger switch will generate the transient pulse on the bus. Node 1 is a transmitter sending data to node 2 and node 3. CAN H and CAN L are connected to the oscilloscope to capture the fault pulse waveform. Also, I do have USB connected to node 1 to capture the serial prints for monitoring the node activity during the fault. Now let's press the trigger switch. You can see that on oscilloscope, it captures the 66.4 volts on CAN H and CAN L. Let's see what's there on the serial prints. The serial print suggests that the node 1 detects the fault and it went into the fault diagnostic state machine. Here the system recovers from the fault and started the retransmission again. So we see that the transceiver is able to withstand the high voltage pulse. Plus minus 65 volt fault protection makes the system more reliable and robust. Fault detection and reporting feature helps the system to debug the fault quickly. We do have application note on web, which provides more detail on fault detection algorithm. Thanks for watching.